Story of the Circus. Or Jerry of the Circus. Ice cold lemonade, step right up, folks. Well, Sam, this is a funny place to find you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Randall, the best lemonade in the world. Thanks, Max. Have a glass, Bumps? Mm, not a bad idea. Thanks, I will. All right, another one for Bumps, Max. Hey, coming right up, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it's a scorcher today. About yeah. the hottest day we've had all season. Yeah, for which I'm duly grateful. Nothing to make circus business pick up like this weather. Mm, this lemonade certainly hits the spot. Ought to do a good business this afternoon, Max. You bet. Ain't done bad so far, and the sideshows ain't open yet. <laughs> yeah, looks like we'll pack them in this afternoon. Yeah, I certainly wish we could have had a streak like this last week. Would have saved me a lot of trouble as well as money. <clears throat> well, I don't want to butt in, Sam, but I hear you're going to have to get that note renewed at the bank. Mm, I'm afraid so. One week like this, and I could have been in the clear. Well, I certainly wish I had enough money to tide you over. Oh, uh... You're welcome to my little nest egg, but... I'm afraid it wouldn't cover your expenses. Uh, well, now, Bumps, that's mighty fine of you. I appreciate your offer more than you know. Uh, if it'll do you any good, you just say the words, Sam. Well, thanks, Bumps. Well, well, I'm heading for the office wagon. Are you going that way? May as well. I'm just killing time till the show. Uh, thanks for your offer, Bumps. I, I think I'll just have to get the money through the regular channels. Oh, it's a shame that cyclone had to hit us when it did. Uh, I pity it had to hit us at all. Yeah. Oh, Jerry tells me there's something doing with that Montana rail. Yeah, yeah, I should hear from them today. We got a long night letter off to them last night. Any idea what it's all about and how it concerns Jerry? Something to do with that ranch in Montana that Tim left him. Oh, I don't see the connection. Well, whatever it is, it seems to be urgent from the tone of the wires we've been getting. I hope whatever it is, it'll be good for Jerry. It'd be a pity if he were to get into litigation with a big railroad company. Yeah, well, until we hear, we might as well hope it's good and not bad news for the boys. Yeah. Well, here's your office wagon. Yes, I'll leave you here. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for the lemon. Oh, no, don't mention it. <laughs> I'll be seeing you, Bob. Hot dog. All right. Get a hot dog. The hot is tasty. Hot dog. Uh, looks like the side show will be open soon. Oh, hello there, Joe. Hi, Bob. Oh, you seen Jerry? Yeah, back at the sideshow. Major shooting his mouth off about something, and he and Patsy are trying to make him pipe down. You don't see. Guess I better check on that. <laughs> I'm pretty good at handling that midget. <laughs> well, that sounds like Greg. <laughs> Here, Regs. Here, Reg. <laughs> well, old hey, fellow, no, what's wrong? Don't interrupt me, young man. If I want to be good and mad, there's no use trying to stop me. But please, Major, for my sake. Oh, now, don't try any of your woman's wiles on me, young lady. I won't have Hello it. Hello there, Major. Well, Jerry, I brought your dog back and... Oh, Patsy, how lovely you look. <laughs> Thank you, Bunch. Well, well, what's going on here? I could hear your voices way over at the Midway. Oh, plenty, Bumps, just plenty. When I think of it, it makes my blood boil. That's what it does. Oh, that's bad, Major. That must be worse than high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll thank you not to be making fun of me, Bumps. Oh, I'm not. Indeed, I'm not, Major. I was just kidding. Yes, well, let me tell you, there's been entirely too much kidding going on around here. See, Bumps, it's all my fault. Real it is. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear you admit it. Ah, oh, gee, we didn't mean to do anything really wrong, but you see, it was like this, Major. To take the most personal feelings of a friend and to make light of them. What do you think of that, Bumps? Well, let's have it, Jerry. Well, you see, the other day, Speed played a joke on Rags and me. Mm -hmm. He did? 
<laughs> it serves you right. That's what it does. Well, you know, he's marvelous at imitation, and he's a wonder as a ventriloquist. Yeah. You know, making his voice come from strange places. I never heard of such nerves. Well, you see, he began meowing like a cat, letting it come from first one place and then another. He had four rags running from one part of the lot to another, and Jim Bennett and me were just as upset as rags. <laughs> so you fell for it, huh? Well, now that was a pretty cute trick, that was. Gee, Rag was <laughs> going crazy barking and... and well, anyhow, when it was over, we... <laughs> Pretty cute trick, I'd say. <laughs> I began trying to think of someone else to fool, you know. So you thought of me. And just think, Bumps, if I hadn't been clever enough to think of Rosa Rossi, I oh, might have... Well, we weren't going to let you really go to Parker City. Honest, we weren't. Well, I may be a little dumb, but I still don't know what happened. What happened? What happened? Why, that young scamp and his ventriloquist friend pretended to be my grandfather, Gustav. That's what happened. Major... I'm awful sorry that we played that joke on you. I really didn't think, well, how it might be pretty serious with you until... Yeah, uh, pretty serious. Well, I can just tell you it was serious with me, mighty serious. Why, do you realize I might have gone all the way to Parker City and found that plot of ground was already covered with houses? But fortunately, I had presence of mind to go to Rosa Rossi, and she told me it was all a hoax. Mm. Oh, hey, Major, the sideshow's open. Yes, so I must get to work. But let me tell you, young man, no more stunts like that. You better hurry, Major. You mustn't disappoint your public, you know. Mm, that's right, Patsy. My public must never be disappointed. Huh. And let me tell you, Major Mike will never let his fans down. No, sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> well, the major on a rampage again. He certainly took it seriously, didn't he? Yeah, just like he takes everything pertaining to himself seriously. <laughs> uh, what's the matter, Jerry? You've got the longest face I've ever seen on a boy. Oh, nothing. Oh, come on now. Tell Bumps and me. We're your pals, aren't we? Yeah, but... Well, all right, then. I'm just pretty sore at myself, that's all. Oh, but why? Now, what have you done to be sore at yourself? Playing a joke like that on a little fella like Major Mida. I just didn't realize it would mean so much to him. Oh, well, Jerry, I wouldn't worry any more about it. After all, circus folks are good sports. Yes, but I think Jerry's right. Uh -huh. We do play a lot. We have fun among ourselves, the little jokes and such. We enjoy seeing the audiences thrilled and entertained. Uh -huh. well, we clowns like more than anything else in life to see an audience holding their sides with laughter. But then, after all, we're all human, and we have our sober natures as well. My goodness, you sound serious. I feel serious. Why? What's wrong, Bumps? It's Mr. Randall. Uh -huh. He's certainly having to take it on the chin these days. What? what do you mean? Well, you know he had to borrow a lot of money after the circus was wrecked last month. Uh -huh. Sure, but I thought everything was all right now. Well, Sam Randall's not one to complain. But, but what's happened? But it seems he can't meet the note because of the strike and a few unexpected bad days. Oh, that's a shame, Bumps. I'll see. Gee whiz, I, I sure wish there was something I could do. Well, I told him he could have all I've got, but of course, it'd only be a drop in the bucket. Well, uh, how much does Mr. Randall need? Oh, I'd say around fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Gee, money, that's fierce. Yeah, pretty tough on him. Oh, and he's such a grand person. I certainly hate to see him go through this. It costs a fortune to borrow that much. Uh, well, Patsy, what's wrong? Uh, oh, what? What happened? Uh, I'm sorry, I... I guess I was just thinking of something. Oh, well, you certainly go into a coma when you think, Patsy. Oh, I guess that's because I don't think very often. <laughs> lovely Patsy. How are you today? All right, thank you, Boris. Well, this is what I'd call a very fortunate occurrence to find you all here so oh, well. Will you excuse me, please? I thought of something. I, I have to dress first, but I must see Mr. Randall right after the uh, matinee. Well, yeah, yeah, sure, that's all right, Patsy. Uh, Jerry, would you mind asking Mr. Randall to see me right after the afternoon show? Why, of course not, Patsy. Uh, goodbye, then. Yeah. Well... That's funny. Did I upset Patsy? Oh, I don't think so. Only I wonder why she left so suddenly. Gee, I never saw her so funny. She must have something on her mind, all right. Well, I would li dislike so much to have said anything. Did I interrupt something? Why, of course not, Boris. We were just talking about Mr. Randall's bad luck and... Bad luck? Did something happen? Yes, Boris, it has. You see, it's like this. Now, since the site... What makes you think Patsy would be offering him her money? I don't think. But I am good at hunches. It would be just like her. But when she had the chance to double her money or thought she did, she refused. But of course, dear sister. 
Do you not see that for herself she might not take risks, even at great profits? But for a friend, she might... Well, she might be very foolish. I believe you understand women better than I, Boris. <laughs> of course I do. So, for the sake of the little lady, I must see that Mr. Randall accepts a good business proposition. And what <laughs> would you consider a good business proposition, my fine brother? Something that might turn to our advantage, my sister. So? What would you say if we offered our savings and have him put up his entire menagerie as security? But the menagerie... All his animals are worth much more than... Of course, of course. You do not think a man puts up a security that is less in value than the money. That is not good business. And you think you might get his animals? It is possible. Anything is possible. But I do not see how. Mr. Randall is certainly good for the money. Yes, yes, of course. By the end of the season, he will surely have much more than enough to pay it back. Perhaps. But many things can happen. And think, my Olga, with a menagerie, our horses, and a few star ferns, we would have a ready-made circus. But the tents and trappings... I do not think of that. Who would have thought we could have gathered together such fine animals as Mr. Randall owns? We have not got them yet. No, we haven't. But all in good time. I should hate for you to get into trouble, Boris. What would the rest of the Rusovs do without you to lead them? Badly. Very badly, I'm sure. Hmm. But never fear. I have weathered worse storms before. I can handle this. Do not fear. But do you think Mr. Randall will accept your proposition? I do. He will not think it is a risk. He knows that if he has to, he can always borrow enough money to pay me back. You do not make sense, Boris. How then will you get control of his menagerie? Uh -huh. That is easy. I know a very clever lawyer. Very clever. So, what difference does that make? Uh, much difference. A friendly little note I will sign with Mr. Randall. But there will be a sentence in there that he will not notice. You'll see. You forget Mr. Randall is a keen businessman. Yes, but he trusts us. So far. And he will never think I've gotten uh, secretly uh, a clever lawyer to word our friendly agreement. Uh, and now I must go and see Jim Bennett. Bennett? I thought you wanted to see Mr. Randall. Yes, yes. But this business I must do first with Bennett. Why? Especially when you are in a hurry. Olga, sometimes I think you are stupid. Jim and I always got along fine. He is Mr. Randall's right-hand man. I see. Then if I convince him as a friend and he takes the proposition to Mr. Randall, it is simple. And it does not look as if I am too anxious. Mm -hmm. now, now, where is my tie? Uh, here you are, Boris. Uh, no, no, no. Not the black one. The red one. This is a day for celebrating, not for mourning. Ah, yes, it is more cheerful. I am, uh, I am a cheerful friend. A friend in need. You understand, Olga? Yes, I see. Good luck, Boris. And good luck we shall have. And good fortune, too. You will see. 